that's so, different. Are we are you are you taking a picture of the teaching? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now that's yeah, wrong. <laughs> no, you can't take a notice. Can you bring your own notes? <laughs> no, my, oh, my, my sure my okay, are we ready to go? Um, so let's turn this in front of us because that's our huge darn file. Um, so we're up to chapter three, uh, or the exam number three. Um, this one's going to be big, guys, okay? Uh, asses and bases. You're going to see stuff on asses and bases. Um, um, let's just go through uh, a couple of the problems. I'll, I'll do a bad uncle um, acid problem. And then I will do bad uncle acid problem. <laughs> the bad uncle with an acid? No. Um, and then we want to do uh, uh, one of these M1, V1 calculations. So I'll do two of those. I'm going to start doing this super fast. I'm not going to go into the most detail, but I want you guys to have this information and be able to get through it. Um, and I don't want poor Lance to have to uh, download another 12 gigabyte file to this. Well, I changed the format, so it'll probably be easier to uh, download. But now I'm going to be pixelated? No, it was not good. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, mainly, mainly, I wanted voice recording, just so people heard what I was talking about. What was important and what was work a lot, and not be disadvantaged by not being here um, because of scheduling stuff. Uh, because I understand how that. Um, okay, so <coughs> I'm going to do problem number. Uh, 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 25A, B, actually I think I'll just do B. Um, you're starting uh, uh, What exam is this? Two? This is like when I, I do doc camera in organic chemistry and I start going off the page. They're like, uh, excuse me sir, can you zoom out? 280 student microphone. Thanks. Not looking at the screen behind me, I'm looking down here. Okay. Um, so basically the first part of the question, which is the valid part, um, this is the uh, uh, solutions, different types of solutions. Uh, weight per volume, mass per volume, uh, sorry, mass per volume, volume per volume, stuff like that. Big one is molarity, right? You guys all know what molarity is. Mole per liter, know how to do it. Uh, but I'm just gonna do part B because 25B on exam three, um, was uh, a big. It's uh, our dilution problem. Um, the way I always think of our dilution problem is M1, V1 equals M2, V2. I think on your sheet you have uh, what M concentrated, uh, <coughs> sorry, um, so C concentrated, V concentrated equals um, what uh, uh, C dilute. V dilute, uh, same thing. So I think I talked about them fairly interchangeably. But um, so in this case, we're drawing on uh, information from the previous part. Uh, so the answer there was uh, a 16.7 percent uh, glucose solution, uh, an ethanol concentration. And the question here is, if you took 20 milliliters of part A solution. So 20 milliliters of this, um, and diluted to 100 milliliters, uh, what is the final concentration? Okay, um, so what are we asking about? What have we been given? So this would be our M1, our C concentrated. Um, this would be our V1. Uh, finally, we're given our V2, and then all it is is just plugging it into this formula or that formula, depending on how you want to think about it. Okay, I'm going to stick with M1, uh, V1, M2, V2, because that's how I listed it up there. Uh, we have 16.7% um, uh, uh, ethanol solution. Um, we multiply that times 20 milliliters, and we divide all of that by 100 milliliters to get our final, um, final volume, or uh, final concentration, uh, which is going to be M2. And I think that was, uh, let's see here, uh, did anybody get an answer on that? Oh, 3.34 percent? Yes. Okay, one really quick thing, and a lot of people made this mistake. Uh, can C dilute be more concentrated than C concentrated? No, it can 
Okay. Remember the, the analogy I used in class. If you take concentrated orange juice and you mix it with three cups of water, are you going to get more concentrated orange juice? No. So if M2 is bigger than M1, okay, um, then you have a problem with looking too much. Uh, I think I tried to be very, very uh, forgiving on that, um, but I saw quite a bit. Okay, uh, so that was that type of problem. They're going to be on there. Uh, you're going to have to do uh, volumes and stuff like that. Uh, sorry, the uh, different solution types, you know, submolarity especially. Um, okay, so and then the next one is going to be uh, a bad uncle acid problem. Um, so I'm going to give you the OH minus and ask you guys to come up with what? <clears throat> and then, the OH minus. I give you the OH minus. It's an acid base problem. Uh, I'm going to want you to find H2O plus. And then from that, what? That scale, pH. Oh, the pH. Oh, the pH. Oh, yeah, right. yeah, but if you want to try and draw it out so you guys, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The pH is a very important concept. Um, right? Because we talked about like blood acidosis, um, things like that. Uh, these are going to be problems that you may face, uh, depending on what kind of, um, you know, it's going to react as or whatnot. Um, okay, so, um, then I give you, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, I, I, there's a bad uncle problem right here. Um, so, uh, 26B, uh, I give you that the OH minus concentration is equal to 3.23 times 10 uh, to the negative 10 molar. Um, and then uh, I ask you to find the hydronium ion and I ask you to find the pH of the solution. Really fast, is this acidic or basic? An acidic or basic solution? Basic? Yeah, so if you're, uh, remember that your H3O minus concentration goes up, your pH goes down, right? Okay, so higher hydronium, lower pH, so lower hydroxide. Is that good, Dr. Uh, yeah, so the pH, yeah, 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 thank you, thank you. pH. So the hydroxide ion should go up when the pH goes up. That makes sense, yeah. So inversely proportional. Right. And so if we have 3.23 times 10 to the negative 10 molar OH minus, um, is that closer to zero than 3 point something times 10 to the negative 3? So remember, with pH, we have to work with, with hydronium ion getting smaller uh, is going to be a higher pH, right? So we have to determine if we want to roughly figure out whether something is acidic or basic, we need to determine how close it is to zero, basically. How much smaller a small number is versus the larger one. Anyway, we'll just move right on. Okay. Well, I'm going to ask you this specifically. I'm not going to ask you uh, is this acidic or basic for hydronium ion or sorry, hydroxide ion concentration. What I'm going to ask you is to calculate the hydronium and then figure out pH from there. It's much easier when we get to the hydronium. So, uh, what do you guys think? What do we need? Well, we need that relationship that the Kw, which is one times ten to the negative fourteen, is equal to what? Uh, concentration H3O plus times the concentration of OH minus, right? Okay. So in this case, what we need is uh, H3O plus is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14 divided by um, the OH minus concentration, which is given here. Okay. And uh, somebody, let's see. I'm going to be working on a piece of paper. Uh, concentration. Um, I got on this piece of paper, and then it looks right because my purple pen is involved. Times 10 to the minus 5 times the concentration of OH minus. Okay. Okay. Let's see. 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 Let's uh, as chemists, we like molarity, so uh, from this, can we tell roughly what the pH is? Is this an acidic or basic solution? Acidic. Yeah, acidic. So, so 
zero to negative seven as the uh, reference called the reaction, right? Yep. In, in, in that H3O formula. Well, so um, zero to negative seven is in pH, and, um, and H3O plus concentration uh, is kind of like times 10 to the negative seven, and lower H3O uh, plus concentration is going to be the uh, pH, right? So, um, does that make sense? But it has to be an H3O. Right, if it's OH and it's a 3, then it's more basic because it's fat. Okay. Um, to get the pH on this, it's what? Uh, just a negative log of the H3O plus. And so that equals, um, in this case, um, so yeah, we do negative log. Okay. Negative. Um, oh, it's like 4.5. 3.3. Okay, do the calculation because, um... I've got, it's right here. 4.5-ish. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Okay. 4.51? Yeah, does that get? Okay. So we know that it's a set. Yeah. Yeah? No? Maybe so. Yes. Yes. Yes, yeah, it's just it. Uh -oh. So, would you ask us to calculate the pH level? Like, would, in the one, in one question well, like that? Well, um, uh, so I'm going to make this real specific. So, mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I'm kind of in a hurry. So, like I said, at the start of the class, they're going to be, you know, I'm going to change the numbers. Okay. But it's going to be what you've seen before. Okay. Alright. Yeah. Uh, so we're moving on to the exam floor and then we're going to roll into um, 13, 14, 15, and 16. A lot of material to cover, guys. Okay. Um, Alright. So, uh, luckily uh, on this exam I only have two problem types that I'm really concerned about. Um, and they're on here and we actually just reviewed them um, last week, right? Um, I think I went over both of them. Uh, it's just uh, exam four, problem number uh, 23 and 24. Okay. Uh, so half-life problem. Okay. Oh yeah. And uh, the beta and gamma decay thing. So. Um, Can you go with the gamma beta decay thing? Yeah. The half-life of everyone was like, oh yeah, no. Yeah. Um, so that one or yeah. Okay. So, really fast here, um, once again, I'm going to uh, do not try to explain things to us. If something does gamma decay, uh, in this case it was iron uh, 59. Um, and I told you this, so the mass number is 59. Uh, so I asked you for the atomic symbol. Mm -hmm. uh, there you go. And then I asked if it undergoes beta decay. Uh, beta decay meaning that it loses one um, proton, basically, uh, one to its um, mass number or whatnot. Um, sorry, yeah, one to its, oh, it adds one to its atomic number, sorry. Um, so we keep, let's actually start with the beta, it's zero over negative one beta plus something. Remember, this is a, it's got a balance, right? Mathematical equation. So this has got to equal this. So then we're going to have some element here. We're still going to have a 59 here because 59 uh, equals 0 plus 59. And then right here, um, somehow we need to get that 26. What's got to be? It'll be 27. 27. And who's 27? CO. Now, where do we find it? Figure out a tip. Oh, see, I didn't do that. I just kept it up. Okay. Yep. I don't think I knocked too many points, but I think we. Um, no, but they are going to change the atomic number of it. Huh? We change the number. Yeah, yeah. So, so here we're balancing uh, both atomic number. We had this argument last time and we broke it. That's right. Negative we are one. Okay. Yeah. So here's what I'm doing here. Except that Zero. last time, you didn't show us to oh, change it right. into the CO. You kept it as the one that 
I don't remember. And this, we got an hour. Um, but okay. Yeah. I got a question real quick. So, so 27 plus negative 1, 26. We're good. Okay. Okay, the top number at 59 was the weight, right? Uh, that is Roughly. the, uh, that is the mass, the mass number mass. for that specific mass. isotope. Yes. Right. So when you're asking me in, you know, that's, that's, like a, that's just an average. That's yeah. just an average of okay. all the isotopes. Okay. Alright, so the second one was with gamma decay. Uh, we get 59 over 26 Fe again. Mm -hmm. Interestingly enough, we get it again and again because uh, 0 over 0 gamma. Horrible. Uh, plus what to give us this? I mean, it's zero plus zero, zero plus anything is just anything. So, right. um, so you guys got uh, uh, iron twenty, uh, iron fifty-seven or fifty-nine. Sorry, that yeah, just looked like a fifty-seven for a second um, on both sides of that. Okay. Alright, that feel okay? Mm -hmm. uh, fairly straightforward. Should be a fairly straightforward half-life question. Um, uh, and I'm sorry that the wording was a little bit weird. So we're not going to need to know that at all? Oh, uh, so, like I said at the beginning, um, uh, so there will be a couple of multiple choice questions. Um, they may or may not cover any and all of this. I'll put where it was good at. Yeah, I mean, so we could really fast. But this isn't even in chapters. Uh, we never did lab on nuclear chemistry. Yeah. 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 Uh, they may not be exact things that you did in the lab, but see, that's the thing. So the lab portion is comprehensive over the whole course, right? So I can look at a lab, the lab portion of the course, and I can, I can give you any questions that pertain to what we did. You know, so you know it's what I mean? not specific to lab, it's specific to the whole thing. Because what we did in lab is pretty much what we did. Right. I'm just trying to make it very specific for you guys. Okay, sorry. Um, just trying. To, I got a lot of people, and I know you're bailing out of here. Um, so I'm just trying to get as much information out before I have to make it like a pumpkin, and most of us have to make it like a pumpkin um, to make like a turkey and leave. Or, turkey and leave. Turkey still leave. Make it like a tree and leave. Yeah. All right. Um, so that's basically it for uh, the thing. We wanted to go over the what is it? The key for I still need to give you guys keys. Huh? I got the key. Um, but let's just do a key of that lab thing. Okay? Of the post lab questions? Yeah, those post lab questions. I'll give you a key. Is that okay? Um, and then I need a key for 14 or 13. It's 13, right? So we went over all the 13 stuff. Yeah. You guys felt pretty comfortable with that? Okay. Um, 15, 16, I was going to give you a key at some point. Yeah, just go over. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, I'll give you a key uh, tonight. Um, I might be able to grab one for you or draw. Actually, Dr. Layton just put it up there for you and have most of the stuff. I just didn't get one of them last year. Oh, I got a key for last year. Okay, let's just roll. Um, the other way to look at it is look at the odd problems. You're not turning in even problems to do the odd problems where, okay, I don't know if I'm going to be able to write up a freaking that much of a key. Um, I just don't have the time. Um, I could probably have it for you in the morning, but it's going to be like an hour and a half of me going through and try to keep the problems. Um, look on the odd problems. Uh, yeah. All right. Um, so we're done with that. Thank you, Lance, for that. Um, so real fast, let's just uh, remember we talked about this on um, Wednesday night. I want you to know some structures. Okay, um, so for chapter 13, I list out a bunch of structures that I want you guys to know um, for monosaccharides, disaccharides, uh, don't even worry about it because I'm going to let, you know, uh, 
you make or break everybody, but for monosaccharides, disaccharides, and polysaccharides, I'll let you know. I'll let you know those characteristics we talked about on the board. We went over chapter 13 pretty thoroughly. What is a glycosidic bond? It's just an ether. Yeah, it's just an ether, so don't let the big fancy words bully. Just an ether, okay? Um, you know, there are some uh, some characteristics I want you guys to know you're going to be tested on. So, um, you know, and we talked about already, in the interest of time, I'm just going to move on to uh, 14, which I don't think we've talked about. Um, now, I'm kind of at 11 here, so... Um, for chapter 14, uh, well, one of the big things was we were dealing with uh, carboxylic acids, amines, esters, and amides. Okay, the biggest thing I can do for you guys is these reaction diagrams. Okay, um, so we need to get a good reaction diagram up here, and um, I can do that. I'm gonna get rid of this really quick and start over fresh. Um, and the nice thing about this is that um, these same reactions become important in the next chapter, except for, for amides, we call it what? A peptide bond. Okay, and once again, don't let it fool you. It's still just an amide bond. Now we're calling it a peptide bond. Um, okay, so uh, we're always starting with a carboxylic acid kind of in the middle. Uh, that's why these are all carboxylic acid derivatives. Um, the main reactions that happen here are going to an ester. or going to an M. The way to get to both is the same, basically. It just depends on whether you use an alcohol or an amine. I'll get that in a minute. Um, so here we just get uh, N uh, H R. Okay? Okay? What is this? It's an amine. What is that? It's an ester. Ester. Don't confuse it with an ether, right? Okay, it still has the R O R like an ether, but it also has the R O or C double one O. So um, just don't confuse the two. Um, all right, so how do we get these guys? Well, we get them by acid catalyzed dehydration. Okay, so we take going this way, we say plus um, uh, H plus. Or sorry, we put H plus up here, right? And then we add uh, some kind of an H to N R. Okay. So we add an amine to a carboxylic acid with heat and acid catalyst. Okay. And so this is just like a dehydration synthesis. Um, we're going to lose water between here. I don't have any colored chalks, so we're just going to have to roll with it. The color chalk the other day, okay, um, and we're basically going to spit out water, and we get an amine. Does that make sense? Okay, um, and this is uh, uh, basically an amide synthesis. Okay. Um, now, on this way, same kind of thing. This is uh, Fischer esterification. Uh, H plus. Now, instead of an amide or um, an amine as a starting material, we're just going to add an alcohol. So, going this way, it's just going to be a plus R O H. And we're going to get a Y. Okay? So, um, yeah, for both of those, same reaction. It's just when you get an amide, you're starting with the amine. When you're getting an amide, you're starting with an alcohol. So, A goes with A, and then E goes with A. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, so then we, but the, the kind of like slightly tricky part is that there are two ways that we can go the backwards process, okay? Um, so, um, if we go back from here using uh, hydrolysis, okay, acid catalyzed hydrolysis, we would just take the water, add A plus, Oh. Now you always have to go through a carboxylic acid. I can't right off the bat think of a way to get to a, a 
from there. But yeah, so acid catalyzed hydrolysis, and we're just yeah. going to do the exact reverse of what we did with the acid catalyzed dehydration. Does that make sense? So would that be O negative plus H3O positive? Um, o negative plus. Um, so remember here we're basically uh, splitting it such that uh, what the um, the RO go with this and the HO go with that. Remember, so these guys go together to form this, uh, and then these guys go together to form that. All right, we're just doing the exact opposite um, on this face. Does that make sense? I think you might be talking about the stat bonification, which I'll get to. I'm going to show you specifically the different product that you get. You're getting the same type of change between derivatives, but you get a different product. I'm going to show that to you so that it makes more sense, okay? Um, so, going from here to here, uh, or sorry, here, let's finish this guy out. Um, okay, over here to here is the same thing. We're going to add that water back in. It's hydrolysis, acid catalyst. We get back over here. Um, these are going to be our products. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. So that's most of the picture. Now we have staph modification. What staph modification? Soap making. Okay. So we're going, and that's the thing to remember: staph modification, soap making. What is it that's important about soap? Space. Huh? Space. Yeah. It's very basic. It's got to be negatively charged. We're going to end up with a negative charge on our carboxylic acid. Okay, and then we just have to balance to get to that, you know, to understand that. Okay, so, um, if we want to do sap modification, so this is the uh, acid catalyzed hydrolysis. Uh, this is just base hydrolysis or sap modification. And I'm just going to put it down as sap. Okay? Now, um, so what does that mean? It means we're going to add NaOH to this. Okay? And instead of getting our acid and our amine, okay? Actually, um, let's change this up a bit. Um, so, we're going to do the same thing. We're basically going to get that structure. Okay? Um, but I didn't quite write it right. Um, and I'm going to run out of room, so um, let me get rid of this tiny. And I guess, so. so for these guys, instead of this structure, you're going to get R, C, along O, O minus N, A plus. Okay? Uh, and then you're going to get, you know, um, yeah, your, your mean back, basically. Now remember, the mean is going to be more basic when it comes off, and so it's going to pull the proton off the less basic carboxylic acid. Okay? Uh, and that's going to happen in both cases. So here we add, add NaOH. This is what we get for our final product, plus the uh, 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 you know, alcohol or amine. And then on this one, we're going to also add an NaOH. Okay? Does that make sense? That is the majority of that chapter. Um, we so talked about uh, uh, alkaloids and stuff like that. That's not all that important. Um, I mean, you know, it's more for your information because you guys are, uh, you know, all you guys are committed. It's understanding how uh, drugs interact and stuff like that is very important. Um, also, having an understanding of some of the other things that are done with drugs, right? Not a bad thing, either, you know. Um, yes. So, is that how it's going to be presented in the question form? Do you want us to be able to do that? Uh, I want you guys to know that this is a sap modification reaction. This is the acid catalyzed reaction. Um, this is the different types of synthesis, and um, you're going to be required to be able to pick reactions. You know, uh, the I mean, reaction. Pick them, but I mean. I'm going to say, have to draw that out. say something like, no, 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 um, okay. no, okay. no. Uh, we don't do any labs about it, so it's not going to be on show your work like that. The show your work is uh, pretty specific on this one. Um, so you're going to want to know your reaction, uh, your, your, your types of molecules, stuff like that. Okay. Um, it's getting tired.
take that uh, that uh, uh, muffin. The only thing I ate is sugar. What goes up? Must come down. Okay. Um, so for chapter fourteen, I mean that's really a lot of it. Okay. okay. And we can take out the bonds and have the bonds on our white paper in the What? Yeah, and then you just have to remember that when you do staff convocation of either of these guys, you're gonna get stuff. This guy. Um, when you do uh, this synthesis of these guys, you actually, I uh, believe, end up getting uh, uh, positively charged nitrogen, but yeah. Um, just make sure, uh, verify in your book what the reaction shows of the product, and make sure that you link those products specifically. Okay. Um, can I think of anything else in chapter 14 that was uh, really important? Um, I don't think so. I think those were the main concepts. And if you look at your the, the lecture notes, I think we end up going over these like a couple times each. Okay. Uh, chapter 15 is all lipids. It's all lipids. Um, so we want to know the difference between... Huh? Oh, sorry. Last week I did use that for Yeah. Uh, um, I should have gone over there. I see you guys. Are you guys feeling good with this? Um, I'm not writing back up here. It's recorded in all great gloriousness right there. Um, and so, um, we're going to want to know what the difference is between. Uh, Bottom two are what kind of fats? Any acids? Huh? What was it? Those are monosaturated. Um, so I'm talking specifically about these two are unsaturated fatty acids. Okay? This thing up here is a saturated fatty acid. Together, this makes an unsaturated um, triglyceride. Okay? So, um, Remember, what does it being unsaturated mean? Uh, first, it's a saturated. Uh, you're going to get better packing. Closer. You're closer. Closer yeah. packing. You're going to get more surface area in contact with each of the little individual fatty acids. And so you're going to have, what, greater intermolecular, intramolecular forces or um, lower intramolecular forces? Huh? What do you mean greater? Because they're closer together? They're closer together, more surface area right. to interact. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get greater intramolecular forces. Mm -hmm. When it's unsaturated. unsaturated. Uh, greater surface area equals greater uh, intramolecular forces. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> and this equals what in terms of melting point and boiling point? Oh, it's going to be lower. <coughs> it didn't go with it. It's decreased it's because it's. It would be a lower melting point. No, it's a higher melting point. It would be a higher melting point. Higher melting point. Higher melting point. Oh, okay. Remember, okay. The, uh, when we're trying to get, um, okay. when we're trying to get through uh, to changing that state of matter, we're trying to separate the molecules to get farther apart. Mm -hmm. The more forces attracting them together and holding them, the um, harder it's going to be to do that. So your melting point is going to be higher, and the boiling point is going to be higher. Um, okay, if that surface area is higher, if you've got the saturated fatty acid. Now, if it's unsaturated, what happens? No, well, you get yeah, you get this kinking, right? Mm -hmm. And then these guys can't quite like stick together as well. Good. That's the unsaturated. Oh, I'm sorry, I said it backwards. Um, uh, up here, saturated right. fatty acids. I just said it the last time wrong, right? No, because up so far, the double bond is unsaturated. Then I brought it back up here and I said, these 
saturated. No, no bonds. No bonds. Okay. So I, I was I was taking this. I was distinguishing okay, so saturated versus unsaturated. Okay. So double bonds equals unsaturated. Yep. Yeah. And why? You don't know why? Why? Because it's a double bond. That means, so if it's saturated, it means it has all the hydrogens. If it's unsaturated, it has the other bond because it doesn't have all the hydrogens. So, okay, so, um, so here, yeah. This is an uh, a sat unsaturated, uh, what? Um, lipid, basically. Uh, unsaturated tri triazeoglycan, right? Um, and then what I was trying to distinguish is these fatty acids down here are going to give a more surface area, I mean, when they're together, when they're all together, um, than these guys. So this one having both types is going to be intermediate between one that is completely unsaturated and one that is completely saturated. This is going to be extremely important. I apologize for not, you know, for, for starting that second part off and just flipping the number, you know. Can you just label it? Hmm. Oh, I'm <laughs> you. Unsaturated, no, saturated, get tired, guys. Saturated fatty acid, right? Unsaturated fatty acid, okay? Uh, this goes with this, right? Okay? So the other one's going to have the opposite effect. It's going to have less surface area, it's going to be less intermolecular forces, less blind, melting point, um, less blind point. We see this in the store uh, every day when we walk down the fats and oil section because they're fats. They're fats? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're, they're just, yeah, but they're always uh, the, the uh, saturated fatty acids are all oh, the building blocks. Yeah. And they're things solids. like that, right? So they're solids. Right. Um, yeah. The unsaturated ones are they're oils. oils. Yeah. Okay. Um, and there are charts in the table that we uh, went over, stuff like that, that just kind of showed you what those different oils are made of. Um, then we had one other type. Um, so remember we had uh, like uh, five different class of molecules or four different class of molecules. I wanted you to know, I wanted you to know uh, waxes. I wanted you to know unsaturated uh, uh, lipids or triacylglycerides. Saturated triacylglycerides. I want you to know these structures and be able to differentiate between them. Um, uh, and then the steroid. What I want you to know is this structure. Six, oh. six, 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 five. five. Uh, yeah, six, six, five. But you gotta have them in the right order, right? And like, uh, uh, that's the five. I got this thing. That, well, I like it. Okay. No. No. That's not right. Number three, C is Hold on, somebody look it up. Somebody look it up. I'm going to from No, he's right, because C, C only has five. C only has five. Uh, C six. has five. C has five. No, but C in this in drawing, drawing has five. It only has five sides. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Keep going. Thank you. Don't throw us off. Um, no, I'm not trying to, guys. <laughs> Uh, there I did it again. Hold on. Still five. Uh, and I said there I did it again. Um, uh, it's just been a very, very long night, day, weekend, all these So, and I've been talking for two and a half hours, guys. And I've tried to write emails for two hours before that, and I had a lot of other stuff I was really wanting to do. So, um, I mean, in terms of like getting those emails done and then getting other stuff that I need to do for this class. Okay, so um, this is what I want you guys to know that so scratch truck we don't like. That is not scratch truck. Okay. Uh, did somebody confirm the structure? I'm tired enough right now. That uh, it's yeah, it's um that's it. It's six, 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 six and five. that order. Yes. So first I was trying to write it linear and I was like that doesn't work there. Okay. Um so this guy is that steroid structure, um, cholesterol. Uh, remember, this guy is a uh, one of the lipids, right? But it's like the one different lipid. Okay, so it's not a fatty acid type lipid. Okay, so I just want you guys to you know distinguish. That's a big distinction because I could ask you which one of the following is not a 
fatty acid lipid, uh, sorry, fatty acid like lipid, right? And you're going to want to be able to take a little cholesterol from wine. Um, okay, this is an un. <laughs> this is a saturated uh, fatty acid, right? All together, the whole structure is. Yeah, uh, and I'm trying to say saturated uh, uh, fatty acid lipid, I guess. Fatty acid right? Okay, and then of course, if they were all. Um, single bonds, there were no double bonds, then it would be an unsaturated fatty acid liver, unsaturated triacetylglyceride, right? Wait, say that one more time. Hold on, let me let jump up. Um, this guy, these fatty acid lipids, we call them what? Triacetylglycerides. Okay, so this guy right here is what kind of triacetylglyceride? Well, I want to say unsaturated because it has that one double bond in it. So it is? Okay, but it's unsaturated, so that's why I'm really confused. Oh, sorry. I was trying to write unsaturated, which was correct, and... Okay, so it's unsaturated yeah. because of the double bond. Yes, yeah. why? Yeah. If it was all single bonds, then it would be saturated. Sure. Okay, uh, there's WNS and unsaturated, right? Are you guys sure? Okay. Um, and then, if it was all single bonds, it would be D... Be I'm going to let you guys tell me. It'd be saturated. Yeah. Okay. It would yeah. what? Saying, uh, now I have to do that to you. If there was no double bonds, everything was just single bonded, then it's saturated, saturated because all of them have all of their hydrogen. Everything goes together. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, an unsaturated triacetylglyceride is going to be called uh, what? It's acid units are going to be called what? I don't know. Um, uh, unsaturated fatty acids. So oh. Unsaturated fatty acids oh, okay. plus yeah. what? So this is another reaction you guys need to remember. So this is just equal to fatty acids plus OH groups. And what kind of synthesis is that when we go from here to here? All right, so that, oh no, wait a minute, hold on. We just talked about it on the board before. It's an esterification synthesis. Okay. You typically do this acid catalyzed. Okay? I mean, that's, you know, that's how you do it. Okay. The one thing to remember is that going the reverse direction is, you can do it two, two ways, right? Using, um, what, uh, sap application or using acid catalyzed hydrolysis. Okay, so these are the tie-ins to chapter 14 that we just made. That make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right. Um, now. Uh, do you want me to draw out what this would look like? I mean, that, that reaction? I mean, you guys understand that basically you got, you know, um, this portion coming from fatty acids, and then this portion coming from the other thing, and just doing that certification. Yeah. Uh, how many fatty acids would you need to make one triacylglyceride if it was unsaturated? Three. Yeah. So three for every one molecule of glycerol. Um, okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Very important to understand those reactions, okay? Um, and then that relationship between oils and fats and being unsaturated and saturated. Okay? All right. Um, that's a lot of it. Uh, so, once again, you can use this. Uh, this direction, you can use step modification or hydrolysis. You can have the same thing where you get two different products that are different, right? So that's the only difference between self application and the acid catalyzed hydrolysis is that there's a slight difference in the passive fatty acid product. One's the base, the soap, and one. Okay? That makes sense? Okay. Um, how do we feel about that? It is what it is. A lot of energy. See me up here. I mean, I'm lecturing over the same stuff you guys are going to have to take an exam on, and it's getting confusing me. I'm tired. You know, I, I get it. So, um, oh. uh, so chapter 16, uh, we're doing peptides and stuff, right? Um, so uh, the bond between uh, different amino acids is what? 
Captain? Peptide bond. Uh -huh. okay. And the other word is an amine bond. Yeah. Just a, a fancy form of an amine bond. Okay. Um, oh, uh, one more thing from chapter 15. Blast from the past. When the not quite prof said that you had an alcohol like this, and then, um, yeah. And the alcohol was really, really, really long. What's that called? The poly. Polyunsaturated. You guys are going to have chapter 15. Remember, this is all darn it. has a big old alcohol portion on the ester. It's called a wax. Oh, oh that's right. That is the wax. So you're going to recognize this. I want you guys to recognize that. That's another type of uh, uh, what's the lipid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I want you to recognize all these uh, reaction stuff. I'm going to give you another piece of paper. I'm going to give you, if you get two cheat sheets, um, I will post that. And yeah. the steroid is always just going to be the ABCs. Okay. Huh? That's always just the ABCD, is the steroid 6665. Six, six, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And that's all I want you guys to recognize. Just pick it out of the lineup and realize the difference between it and the other guys. Um, and that they're used like, for signaling in a couple of, you know. I mean, I'm not going to ask too detailed. Those are trees. We learned that we look for us to do overall picture. It's a big thing in that relationship. Um, there's so much stuff in chapter 16, it's hard to focus at all, but um, uh, uh, individual amino acids come together and form uh, diamino acids and triamino acids. Remember we talked about for every, um, if you have n number of amino acids in a peptide, you're going to have n minus 1, okay, peptide bonds. Right? Okay. okay. Um, so am I going to want you to remember the, how are we doing on card? Okay. Uh, remember, I'm going to want you guys to remember uh, you know, kind of how they stick together. Um, so you can always draw uh, a set of amino acids starting with, um, you know, just this idea that you have uh, carbon with um, a hydrogen and some kind of R group. And then you have an amino end and then a carboxy end. Um, remember, it's just a bitter ion, so it's a plus and negative form. So positive charge on the amino, negative charge on the carboxy at pH of 7. Uh, I want you guys to look into the, that PI stuff. Remember that isoelectronic point? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, just understand how the form changes over that graph. Remember we talked about that? Uh, I did that stuff up on the board in the last class. Okay, you guys are getting overwhelmed. Okay. Um, so hold on. You guys can tell by a minute ago. Don't try to So, it's a lot of information. Um, okay. So, uh, of course, these are the amino acids. Big thing about the amino acids is the side chain, right? Uh, what kinds of different side chains can we have? I think there are pretty much four major types, maybe. Uh, I may be mistaken on that. Um, well, we had kind of polar and nonpolar, right? Then we had um, acidic and basic, right? Those are the four main types. Okay, I'm pretty sure. You may think of anything else. So um, that's going to be taking them out of the line. You know, look at. Uh, okay, um, so. 